Welcome back, kiddos. This is 96.9 WFMZ, the sack fly. My name is Dick Playoff Richards, and I am joined by Gord Sin Ben, Sa- Sin ben Simmons. I always do that, Gord. Sorry about that. 30 Gord. fucking years. You can't get my name right. Ah, you got, you're telling me 30 years, 30 years we've been doing that. Is that right? It doesn't feel like it. Some days it feels like a hell of a lot longer. <laughs> Some days it does. And as you know, as you're here, you know why you're here. We're here to get you through the four to five rush, afternoon rush to get you home from your work. This is everything sports. Sports is all we know. Sports is everything we got. Ain't that right, Gord? Absolutely. How are you doing today, Dick? Uh, you know, I'm doing pretty good. It's another Monday. It's another Monday. The Knicks suffered a brutal loss last night. Don't I just, they always, uh, huh? I know, man. I got, you know, the, the MSG is beautiful. I love going there. The season tickets are great every year. But, uh, God, man, I just, if if Thibodeau, if he doesn't get his head out of his ass, I'm out of here. I'm, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm going like to be a Nets. I'm going to be a Nets fan. I, and I don't want to do that. Trust me. There's nothing like having a bottom feeding team to fucking desecrate the Madison Square Garden like that. Right. But, you know what and they Brunson, say? What, what can you do, huh? Right, and Brunson's having a career year. You know, he's going to get some MVP votes, and I'm I'm really happy about that. Obviously, but uh, we gotta we gotta keep coaching them. We can't just we can't just expect them to figure it out on their own. You know, they're Absolutely. kids at the end of the day. They're not like us. Old they're not heads. like us. Not everybody's been doing hard hitting sports radio for the last thirty years. And I'll tell you, not because you asked. I'm doing great today. It is Monday, I April first. I was getting to it. It's my first day back in the seat. Obviously, I had a lot of shit I had to put behind me uh, with the recent suspension coming down from the higher ups. But uh, we're back in here, and we'll see how long I can go. Stay out of the sin bin. <laughs> well, they don't call you sin bin for nothing, um, and you know that's okay with me. So, you know, for this episode, uh, like I said, we've been doing this for thirty years. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of beat writing. We've been beating it for thirty years, and. And, you know, we were just thinking about it. It's a no better time to go through the top 10, you know, Gord and Dick's top 10 plays of the 21st century. So that's what we're here to do. We're going to go go through who we think is the best, the best 10, and we're going to give a little bit of reasons why, and a few honorable mentions to go along with it. Absolutely. And one thing that everybody's got to know out there is that this is an objective list. If something has happened in the world of sports the last 30 years, we've seen it. We've been there from fucking you name it. We've watched it, we've written about it, and we've God knows we've talked about it here. Right, right. Yeah, the, the amount of the amount of fucking texts and shit I get from you about all this all this sports jargon over the years, it's just crazy. You 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 just have a nose for it, brother. Absolutely. And speaking of sports jargon, why don't you start us off here? <clears throat> That's a everybody great point. Everybody knows you Every- like to get on this soapbox Every- and tell everybody <laughs> stuff about these sayings that nobody Every- knows about. Everyone knows it exactly. And today we're I've talking been suspended, about suspended, but not for that long. I could never forget this. Right, right. We got the today. What does it mean? What the hell does it mean? Today we're talking about can of corn. What does can of corn mean? You hear it? You've heard your dad say it when you're growing up in little league. You hit a pop fly. Everybody goes can of corn, can of corn, and they make the catch. Well, it dates back to like the twenties, right? And uh, back Doesn't in the day, they put everything does, and they would put the can of corn. Can of corn was like corn in general was one of the highest bought, you know, uh, vegetables, and and they would stock it a ton, but they put the overflow up really high. And when you need to get it, you get this long pole with a hook around it, and you'd go up and you'd reach around the uh, the can and you pull it forward, and you take your apron and you put it out like this, and the can of corn would drop right in the apron. Boom. He said, can of corn, because you, all you're doing is catching it with your apron kind of pushed out like a big glove. So when you hit a routine fly ball, a sack fly, if you will, you know, put up your glove, little can of corn, right into the right into the mitt, right into the webbing, and boom, can of corn. So that's where it came from back almost 100 years now, they've been saying it. I feel so illuminated. Thanks for that. And that's what this episode's going to be, a can of corn. We're going to get you to that drive, four to five. I know it's rush hour. I know it sucks. You're probably, you know, probably on the freeway or the, you know, backed up in the tunnels. No good. Then again, for every person who's upset they're in this drive, there's somebody who doesn't want to get home to the wife. Am I right? Oh, you couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't be more right, Sin. You couldn't be more right. Why do you think I have this job? Exactly. 30 years for nothing? No way. But that's why we're here, to make this drive a little bit better. So that's what we're going to do. So. I'm going to toss it back to you because I know you like to talk about birthdays on this show sometimes. Today's a good day to do it. I'm a big birthday guy. And uh, this day, April 1st, we've got some good birthdays in the sports world. Going back to 1939, 
one of the all-time greats in Major League Baseball. We've got Phil Necro, 24-year Major League Baseball veteran, uh, one of the fathers of the modern knuckleball. And uh, what can you say about somebody like this? I mean, the staying power to play nearly a quarter of a century, not quite as long as we've been doing this show, but long enough. Uh, so respect enough. is due for Phil Necro for the, being one of the best knuckleballers. That's, yeah, incredible. 24 years in the league. That's just amazing. Uh, you know, you don't see that very often these days. I'm going to jump ahead to uh, my man, Randy Orton. Now, you guys may know that I have a soft spot for the WWE. And every time to time we talk about that when we get our, when we get away from the big three and the big four of hockey, basketball, baseball, football. But, you know, Randy Orton, 14 Overall WWE championships born this day in 1980. I had to, I had to bring him up. He's just a great guy. We've had him on once before, and he was a legend. So happy birthday, Randy! Happy birthday to the great Randy Orton. Uh, you skipped over one person, and it's important. I left him because for you. I need to, I need to be talking about this guy over to 1972. The great Darren McCarty, National oh, Hockey yeah. League player, four Stanley Cups for the Detroit Red Wings, uh, their dynasty in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, ultimate team player. Hockey's full of those kind of guys, and uh, he's a chip off the old block if there ever was one. Born on this day in 1972. Four Stanley Cup champions, that championships. That's just a Mount Rushmore type of people you're going to get uh, in the hockey world, and that's just awesome. Um, and fast forward, last happy birthday. Andreas Thorkelsen, uh, the great Norwegian jab thrower. Um, he's Olympic champion, three-time, and uh you know, my son, he's been in Javelin the last couple of years. He's doing really good. How's he just he graduated doing, huh? college. He's doing good. You know, this is a big year for him. He's um, he's doing well. He's got a, shot, a real shot for these uh, Paris games that are happening in August. So, um, you know, it's been fun. You know, I love sport. I wish he, uh, you know, I wish he was a basketballer, but what am I right. going to do? Or a baseballer. But, uh, you know, he's great. And, and Thorkeldson is one of his favorites. So, uh, you know, I don't know much about Javelin, though. It's kind of foreign to Who me. Does? Very, very foreign. It's literally from the Europe European times or European uh, side of the world. So, but happy birthday, to Andreas Thorkelson. I'll tell you though, I'll and tell good you, luck. Dick, you did the right thing with your kid. Mine stuck up on the baseball. He thinks he's going to be closing games for the <sighs> Yankees in twenty years. And I told him that's not the path. I mean, you got to be throwing in the eighties by the time you're fourteen. Right. And he just doesn't have it. I mean, he loves the game. He loves, loves, loves the game. Right. So, I mean, he's doing yes. something right out there. But I right mean, the, fu his the future there. He's got to go into some some different paths here. And I tried. I told him. I you know, he tried to get our boys together a couple summers ago and get the jab right. into his hands. And he just, he didn't want any part of it. He just wants he just wants to get on that mound. So. Um, right. You know, it's it's hard as a parent, but what can you do? Uh, yeah, pushing off the mound and throwing. I mean, that is that is quite a joy. And um, I think you just got to tell him that. I mean, if he makes it even to the minors, I mean, the minors are the minors are really fun, you know. And you're gonna make a good living there. But problem you know, though is like uh, between those two sports, everybody majors. thinks everybody thinks those two sports are very similar, right? And right. They, they they try to bridge this gap between the two of them. And ah. They're so different. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You got to pick yep. one or the other. You can't. You know, you can't keep going down two paths at the same time. You got to pick one. That's why I told him. I said, there's going to be a time you got to pick. Uh, but for now, he's with the baseball. And, you know, I bless, you know, he's he's out there right. doing what he's got to do. But um, yes, you know, his, and his, his path's only so long. I mean, he's, he's a little pipsqueak like his father. Yeah, that's a good point, Gord. That's a good point, Gord. Um, he'll be fine. He'll find his way. He's young. He's young. We, we've all been there. We've all been there. So. Yes, we have. One more housekeeping issue before we get to our list here. Um, every episode, we like to break down the one big thing that's happened in sports history on this day. And as we know, today's April 1st and uh, way back in 2009. So we were already quite established beat writers of the world. Uh, I missed this one, though. I think I was at a more higher profile event than this. But on this day in 2009, Easton, Kentucky played Kentucky State in a baseball game, you know, early season for the Collegians. And right. Eastern Kentucky won 49 to 1. Talk no about joke, a bad huh? day at the office. 49 runs. That's just unreal. And if you take a look at the box score, um, you know, during its first inning, you know, EKU started with a uh, 22 runs in the first inning. That's something I was the manager. Special. I just quit. I'd resign. Gotta get I mean, out of there. We, I mean, are we talking, is there a mercy rule? Can we wave the white flag? Like, if you're down Absolutely 20... not. That's the problem with this generation. They want the easy way out. There's no way. You gotta, you gotta take your licks like a man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm just saying, if I'm on the other side, I don't want to waste my bullpen at all. I don't no, what are you going to do? Give them a trophy for completing the game? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta learn no, to lose. Don't... 
they don't get a trophy because they're not going to complete it. Ah. All right, let them play. Let them suffer. 40, they went on to score 27 more runs. Unanswered, basically. Unbelievable. Pretty unreal. Okay. What are you going to do? That's April 1st in 2009. Um, okay, so getting to the meat and potatoes of the episode. Um, shout out to our sponsors out there. You got James Deli, one of the best subs in New York. I absolutely love him. Absolutely. Super good. Super good. And uh, what's that pizza place that we always like to go to? Oh, uh, I'm just kidding, shit. Tommy. We love you. Tommy Jones Pizza <laughs> on 75th and 10th. You guys are the best. I'm telling you, I'm going to get a pizza right after this. That's my Monday tradition. Okay. Absolutely. Sign me that's up. What, that's tr tradition and routine. That's all we live by here in New York. Okay. Top 10. Oh, you want to talk about, we got uh, honorable mentions. You want, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? We, we, I'm we, all we, over we, the place. Gotta give, I need to, you got to reel me in. Reel me I in. I mean, you talk about, I mean, 20, 20, 25 years, almost a sport and tradition here in right. the 21st century. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that could have made this top 10 list. Uh, some guys who came closer than others. And we've got to give respect to some of these guys uh, in the honorable mention list. Uh, and I'm going to start right up right up here at the top here. And uh, we've got none other, a little bit further down I-95, but uh, we love him just the same. Uh, the great Kyle Schwaber. Unbelievable. The Schwarbombs. Schwar this, bomb. man, this man is a throwback. Uh, he's a throwback to those true outcome players that we love on this show, the Adam Dunns of the world, mm. Mark Reynolds, even yeah. Reggie Jackson back in the 70s and Mark 80s. Mark McGuire. I mean, a couple of things these guys were going to do. They were going to hit a tank, they were going to walk, or they were going to strike out. And Schwarber, he does a lot of those things. He's got 246 home runs and counting. In 2022, he led the majors with 46 home runs. And fun Fun fact, we love some fun facts and some statistics on this show. In 2023, he hit 47 dingers, mm -hmm. and he only hit 48 singles. So he's, he hit one more single than he hit home runs. <sighs> Unbelievable. Yeah, he's an absolute tank. When he steps Under the into Mendoza the plate. line, he hit 197. He's batting leadoff for the Phils. It's like, what's going on down there? I mean, they, got, they almost made it back to the World Series for two years in a row, but Arizona had some other plans for them. Didn't he have like the most home runs in the uh, NLCS like ever? Yeah, I think home in 2022 he, like, he was hitting tanks. Abs every game, every game you can count on. And that money line was printing money, absolutely and you printing love money. These guys, here. these kind of guys, they, they don't just they don't just tuck it around the pole. They don't hit it in the first you know the first row of the outfield right. bleaches. I mean, this guy's hitting it out of the stadium. It doesn't matter where he is. I mean, he's hitting absolute bombs to the moon. Put it in the water. Yeah, put it in the water. Exactly. Absolutely love him. Like I said, I think he, you know, he was just printing money for me back in back a couple of years ago. Every year, Absolutely. pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, good luck to him, and uh, hopefully, we get to see more of that. But except when make they're the playing list. our Yanks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, if they don't get their shit together, we got Aaron Judge. Okay. <sighs> Being a lot so of I'm problems. looking. I'm looking. We got it. You know, if we spend all, if we spend every all the same amount of time on every person, we're gonna be here all day, brother. Yeah, you're right. So let's let's one hour know, but, goes by all too quickly here on the yeah, show. Yep, an hour goes by all too quickly. Exactly. So moving up, this is one of my favorite bowlers. I know we're going to talk about some more bowlers in the future. Uh, Jeffrey, the dude, Lebowski. Uh, we almost put him in our top 10, but uh, he actually doesn't have uh, you know many accolades when it comes to bowling, but we just absolutely love him and the camaraderie that he brings to the bowling scene. I like his scene. style. I love I his lo style. I, I totally agree. It's West Coast style. You know, it's not really, it's not really normally our thing, but... You know, I mean, you ask me. I mean, could it cut it in this town? Probably not. But yeah, I mean, he's there's, there's a long way between California and here. So I mean, he can do what he's got to do out there, and yeah. uh, we admire him from afar. Nevada. Oh yeah, absolutely do. I mean, he's he's an awesome person, awesome player for the game. So absolutely. I know this next one you're very passionate about, so I'll uh, let you take the reins for this uh, honorable mention here, who well, just snuck know, into the category of being active right. in the 21st century. Well, this is interesting. So you guys know I was a big fast pitch player back in the day. I played a lot of slow pitch, but then I actually kind of cut Here my teeth go. in the fastball game because I, I wasn't good enough for the majors. You know, I was never going to. I played D1 baseball, and, and uh, but I went and, and decided to play some uh, fast pitch softball. And uh, there's this man named Eddie Fainer, king of his court. And he played from 1940s to the 2000s. He literally retired. And was it 99 or was it 2000? 2000, the stroke knocked 2000. him out of the game. Right, so we can't, you know... Uh, can we put him in the list? No. If we could, he'd be number one. Absolutely. In his career, in his career. Now this is crazy. He was a pitcher, and he had 141,000 strikeouts. He had 9,743 winners, victories. Right. 930 no hitters, 
and 238 perfect games. Okay. Unbelievable. Those numbers really are hard to compute. Okay. And uh, I just I just can't believe it. He the king in his court was one. It was him and three other people, and they would beat they would beat up on teams with uh, full rosters, nine versus four, and they would just tear it up. So, Eddie Fainer, absolute king. Absolutely. Long live the king in his court. Long live Eddie Fainer. Eddie Fainer. Man himself. You know, he once struck out four major leaguers back to back to back to back. Yeah, it was uh, Roberto Clemente. I think Willie uh, Mays was in there too. Willie Mays, just, yeah, legends. I mean, the, the, the best of their time, the best the best ever, if you ask me. Yeah, uh, anybody's mo- time. Mo- moving, moving on here, we've got one more from the West Coast. We've got weightlifter Donnie Shankel. Donnie <laughs> Shankel, Donnie. regardless of where you come from, Donnie Shankel is bigger than you. Um, <laughs> unbelievable power in the clean and jerk and snatch. Uh, his his hang clean and jerks are just absolutely unbelievable. He inspired, uh, you know, a large portion of the new generation of weightlifters out there uh, you know once again this is a this is a discipline that we don't often discuss but that's what this show is about that's what the sack fly is about it's about doing the right thing talking about things that are noteworthy so uh donnie hey, shankle about, definitely on honorable mention yeah if we get into the world of weightlifted i mean cal strength i mean thank god for their time uh you know 15 20 years ago they were really pushing the game of, of weightlifting on the youtube really got the gyms yeah on the youtube right when youtube was yeah young and young and I didn't know what it was, but these guys were lifting heavy weights. I still I think, don't know what it is. Huh? They just put it in front of me before the show. They inspired a lot of people to lift some heavy weights. So thank you, Shankle. You just they got sure shankled. Did. That's what they say. That's you what the got kids shankled. say. Those battles that him and John North had at Cal Strength. Oh, my gosh. Late 2000s, early 2010s. Stuff a legend. Somebody Talk should, about a rabbit trail. We should yeah. make a movie about that. Speaking of another Donnie, uh, we have to say the late, great Donnie Baker. He was a comedian and a baseball player. And a good friend of us, he came on Bob and Tom's show. They're good friends of ours. And we just we just absolutely loved loved him. So rest in peace, Donnie Baker. Uh, that dude was hilarious. And he was an MLB hopeful like like all of us, like your son. And, we still uh, and are. So we still are, exactly. Uh, no problem. Absolutely. We've got one more honorable this mention. This is one of my on favorites. Absolutely. I know, and to my knowledge, I mean, we've been covering, covering all these games for over 30 years here. Um, to my knowledge, this man is the only kicker, a punter, to be drafted in the first round of the NFL draft mm-hmm. from Florida State University, Sebastian Janikowski. Of course, only the Raiders could draft a kicker, a punter in yeah. the first round, and that's what they did in 2000, selecting Janikowski 17th overall. This man was listed at six foot one, 260 pounds. I have a feeling uh, that two six zero was probably more like a two eight zero or two nine zero, but you know what? It was entertaining, and that's what sports are for. You know, they're here to entertain everybody, and they're here for us to make a lot of money on the side. But you know, we can't really tell. Uh, you know, that's what I got suspended for this last couple of months. So, you know, well, I can't luckily really it's coming. Le- it's legal, and this, luckily it's getting legal everywhere, and they're, they're putting it all over the sports world. You know, all over the games. I can't get away from it. Absolutely. I, I, I I loved it when we just had to text Ricky, our bookie. But anyway, yeah, Janikowski. times. I, I mean, you're right. He probably was around two eighty. That dude was a freaking unit. And um, you know, back in uh, what was it, uh, two thousand eight, I believe he. Uh, I think so. He he. They strolled the Raiders. They, I can't believe this. They strolled about on the field to take a seventy six yarder, and that's just un, that's just unreal, right? That's just unreal. You couldn't and, even do that on the moon. Right, and a you know, funny thing about this, I remember this. It was my kid's birthday uh, when it happened. He was turning Mine twelve. Mine too. Yeah, you're, twelve you're, and four. Yeah, September September twenty eighth, two thousand eight. You know, uh, bo- my boy turned fourteen. I think your boy turned twelve, and uh, you know, he he. I was like, he's gonna make it. I had no doubt, and he actually pulled his hammy. He pulled his hammy on the kick. I promise you. Yep, it was gonna be history. It was one it was step absolutely, from glory. Yep, it was the end of the first half, and. Uh, Absolutely awesome. He played for 19 years, and if he would have made that, if he would have made that kick, he would have been in our top 10. He could have been top five, for all we know. Top three. But all we can do is talk about things as they happened, and that's how it happened there with Janikowski. In Uh, another world, we could talk about it differently. We could go on and on and on. On and on. But we do have to go on here. We have to go to our top 10 list, so uh, getting to be about halfway through the hour here, so we've got to... uh, Got to get We're doing here. right on time, right on exactly. time. If you're, We're if always you're, on time. If you're here, if you're with us right now, it's a can of corn. If you're here with us right now, thank you so much. I hope you're having a great day. I hope that drive ain't too bad, getting to and from work, wherever you're going. And uh, thank you. 
Let's move forward here. I can. I, I. You want me to start things off here, Dick? Yeah, please. Absolutely. So checking in once again, we are recapping the ten greatest athletes and athletic performances of the 21st century. We're going to start in 2015. Uh, back in spring training for Major League Baseball, Will Ferrell. In one day in 2015, he played for ten teams. In one single day. There's a lot of us who dedicated a large chunk of our lives to play for one team. And he did all Mm -hmm. 10 in one day. I mean, I'm a little upset about that, but sour grapes here a little bit. I mean, he played for for a lot of teams. Oakland, Seattle, the Angels, the Cubs, the Diamondbacks, the Reds, the White Sox, the Giants, the Padres, and the Dodgers all in one day. St. Ben of uh, St. Bonaventures at my mother's basement. He played for those teams too. He played for a goddamn all of them. You name it, he's suited up for them. Right, right. He actually played. He one time he played for the minor leagues. He was Rojo Johnson. He was like this. Uh, it was this crazy thing. He came out with a six pack of beer, and he was yeah. He was playing on the mound. mound. Yeah, he was doing great. But this was a uh, this was an incredible thing. He actually he actually played for charity for uh, Craig Collard. He was a baseball player whose career got ended because he had cancer. And, you know, fuck cancer. We hate that shit. And, um, you know, so he did this to raise money and actually raise over a million dollars for scholarships to go to kids and uh, for people that um, were suffering that, uh, you know, couldn't continue playing sports. So Absolutely. And that, that alone, I mean, he's, he's worthy of being on this list here. I mean, let alone the fact, I mean, we, we can't really, it's not the time or the place to talk about the fact that when he played, he wasn't very good. But he had a couple of clean performances in the outfield. Uh, you know, his, his pitching and hitting didn't go super, super well. But uh, well, 10 teams, the, I mean, it's unbelievable. And it's that's a record. A lot of that good, I, just like our radio telethon here and late, later on in the year. Yeah, that's like, a, exactly. That's like a record that'll never be broken. 10, 10 teams in one day. That's why he's one of the greats. Nobody, nobody would even try that these days. Nobody. Absolutely. So that's number 10. Let's move up to number nine. Uh, I got this one. I got this yeah, one, Sin. Do. Sin, Ben, this one's my favorite. I was there. Okay, it's this the last one, time we had faith in this team. This is, a, oh my gosh. Well, I, I, okay, Brunson, I, I do like, I like I what know. we have. It's not like I like it used we, to be. We got OG and Obi. We got some guys right now, but let me let me take you back. Go 20, about 10 years, 12 years. Um, 2011, 2012, the Knicks, the Knickerbockers. Uh, there was a man named Jeremy Lin that came in. And let me tell you, this is one of the things you had to be there. We had a two week stretch. Jamie Lynn came in. He's a he graduated from Harvard. You know Harvard very well. Harvard back in the day. Um, and so okay, Jamie Lynn he came in and his first first eight games, first nine games, he went on absolute tear. He was averaging over twenty points. First game of the I think first game he ever played, he had twenty seven points. Um, or sorry, twenty five and seven game. His in the fourth game that he played, he had thirty eight points against the great late great Kobe Bryant. He beat him. The next game, he had a game win against Toronto and had basically just this absolutely unreal run. And it's one of those things you had to be. He was doing everything. He was averaging two steals a game. Lin he was Sanity. Seven assists. Lin Sanity. I was I've going never, Lin Sane out I've, there. Ex- I've never seen Manhattan pop in the way it was. It was just absolutely, I mean, you know, the Yankees were playing well. We had Sud Jita. I mean, it was just one of those times. It was just, it was just incredible to be in the city. I mean, I, I don't even want to bring it up. I mean, your Giants were doing not too bad back then. I mean, yeah, well, you we're, know, not, we're, we're not getting any further into the football debate here. If you want to talk about football, if you want to talk about football, we're talking about at least we got some Super Bowls under our belt. Nah, Nameth, I know you got your, Nameth shines forever. I know you got your Lord and Savior Aaron Rodgers coming in, but what's he going to do for yeah, you? He'll be back. He's, he's well rested. He hasn't taken a hit in a couple right, of years now. Ah, you really believe this darkness retreat stuff he's been doing? I just, Absolutely. I don't know, I just man. did one myself when I was on uh, suspension. Oh, I feel, come on. I feel rejuvenated and youthful. Come on. Ever heard about rice? Again. Ever heard about rice? Ah. You know, rest, elevate, ah. recover, whatever. So I don't even know. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows I just, it. If I was him, I'd just take some ibuprofen, I'd slap some ice on it, and I'd go out there and I'd play. But that's just me. Uh, we'll be ready this year. You watch out. Well, we'll put a bet. We'll put a bet on it. A little friendly bet. But Jeremy Lin, he's number nine on our list. He's one of our favorites. I'm telling you, you had to be there. Lin Sanity was a special time, and uh, we had to you bring had to it up. There. Maybe I'm, that's I'm, the maybe that's the homers the homers talking in, in us. But whatever. This is an objective list, and I got to tell you, after that year, Houston came in and offered him, I think, three years, twenty five million dollars. And uh, Knicks, Knicks didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to match it. So off he right. went. And that was that. Um, I, th- I think that plays into the legend a little bit that he only had a short time here in the city. Uh, but his right. impact was absolutely remarkable. Um, 
and undeniable just one of those things i mean here we are talking about it 12 years later so uh jeremy lynn checking in at number nine uh moving up to the eighth best athlete of the 21st century here on the sack fly uh we're gonna go back to 2006 2007 in the nc2a basketball era and we've got Ohio State's Greg Oden. And this is another one of those moments where you just had to be there. Um, I remember they narrowly lost to Florida in the NCAA championship that year. Uh, that team had Joe Kim Noah. They were headed by Billy can Donovan just, before he jumped to the league. Anyways, go ahead, I, Dick. Can I can I can I just say this, Gord? That's yeah, back when college can. basketball was a real product that I yes. could get behind. A real product that I could get behind. Now all they do is shoot threes. They one and done. Ridiculous. One and done, right? The kids yeah. aren't even growing, okay? One of the best things of my kid in his life, I'm okay, I'm a good father, but I'm busy. You know, we got the show. So luckily he went and he played, he played, uh, he was at the school with Calipari, okay? And, uh, but the coaches, he didn't play for basketball. Let me get that straight. He didn't play basketball, but like he was around the coaching environment and what, and that was a huge, huge impact on him as a kid. And these kids now, it was one and done. They go there for a year. They don't even get to really be friends. And they go, some of my best times are from college. I just, uh, yeah, the kids are missing out. I don't care. They just want to make millions. Got to be around the environment. Nobody's in it for the love of the game anymore. So when you bring up Greg Oden, it takes me back to a simpler time. When these guys were, uh, you know, they had uh, just battles, battles on the court. And he really looked like he was so dominant. So and that's dominant. the thing. I mean, these these guys back in the day, that draft, it was it was Odin and Durant, one and two. Durant. I said and they should have took Durant. Me too. The Blazers, I mean, they're still paying for it all these years later. But the thing <laughs> yeah. is, I mean, both of those guys were one and done, but they weren't one and done because of the millions. They were one and done because the battles in college prepared them. Now, yeah. Nowadays, all it's about is the money. But when Greg Odin was down on the post battling those, those years in the Big Ten, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, he was one of the most unbelievable athletes I've ever gotten to cover. He was so dominant. I mean, it was it was special, and I thought we had the next, you know, Shaq, the next Wilt coming up. But uh, you know, that's history. But you know, just because he didn't play very long in the in the um, in the Injuries, pros, man. Yeah, just because he didn't, you know, he didn't have the career he wanted. I think it's he's still. I take I take uh, 2010, you know, or sorry, 2007, Greg Oden versus anybody. Everybody outside of Ewing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a given. That's, yeah, that's a, given. a given. Good old Ewing. Okay, I'm gonna pass this. Oh, where do we start with this guy? Okay, oh, this man. guy is a special one. Um, we're going to the Midwest for this one. So, as you know, we have a soft spot for track and field here at the Sackfly uh, Radio Show, and uh, this man uh, breakout year this past year, breakout year. His name is Roger Steen. Okay, Roger Steen. Why do we love him? Well, let's just say he embodies he embodies showmanship and valor and everything you want in a competitor. You know he went to a D2 school, Chris? Exactly. Sorry. Everybody overlooks the Division II colleges. But this just goes to show you, it's not about how many numbers are next to your name. It's about what you have. All right. So, Roger, last year, Roger, he threw 22 meters, 08, in the shot. But that's number 36 all time. But he's making our number seven on the list because... His w- numbers in the weight room are just unreal, okay? Just an absolute champion. He's a NACAC champion. He made the uh, world championships this year. And I actually got a really good feeling we're going to see him in Paris this summer. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about that small gym they've got up in Wisconsin up there. I mean, how many 700-pound squatters have come out of there? I mean, there's a lot of people walking around, and they think the great cultivators of strength, and they haven't had one 700-pound squatter, and they've got they've got three or four of them up there. I mean, that's yeah, that's special. I mean, you can combine the whole Knicks team, and I don't think that they're going to be squatting 700. I don't think you're touching 500. To... Yeah. Especially not this year. Talk about a mess. Oh, <laughs> oh those Knicks. Those Brook- Brooklyn, those guys are just absolutely unreal, messing it up. But Roger Steen, I, I, I'd love to talk more about him, but uh, you just got to go. You got to go watch the videos of this guy performing. Absolutely laying his heart on the line. Thank you. Thank you, God, for Roger Steen. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move forward here, and we are up to number six on our greatest yeah. performers of the 21st century. And before century. you go, I'm going to let you lead us in. Before, before you go, I think this guy could be a lot higher if we were doing this, you know, 
Uh, but he you know, could be, but I, I got to tell you, I mean, when he came to New York and pitched for the Yanks at Yankee Stadium, he didn't really give us too much in 05 and 06. Uh, right. Still a little upset about that. I mean, the expectations were what they were. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, time heals all wounds, obviously. And our number six athlete is Randy, the big unit Johnson. Uh, absolutely, unbelievably imposing force up there on the bump. Uh, pitch from 1988 to 2009. We're talking about all-time statistics here. 303 oh wins, 4,875 strikeouts, 10-time All-Star, five Cy Young Awards, including four in a row from 1999 to 2002. Uh, he pitched a perfect game in 2004 against the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Tough place to play, obviously. Um, oh, yeah. And additionally, I believe he is the only Major League Baseball pitcher to have a confirmed kill of a bird. <laughs> of a bird. Exactly. You got to clarify there. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, this the man. The perfect game. I said, there's a few more things. I heard he loves grunge music, which is incredible. Can't get down with that personally. You, you're not a grunge fan. No, huh? it's just it's all noise. I mean, what are you gonna what are you gonna do with that? You can't well, understand anything the thing is a saying. Well, see, you know, yeah, it's weird for me. Is this guy just come out of Seattle? I just don't get it. Right, I just don't. Get Randy him. Johnson. I mean, the Mariners. I mean, I know you, you get him or not. I mean, those but the long hair. Uh, like I, you I said, really, he couldn't he couldn't cut it in New York. I don't so. get it. You know, some of these guys just aren't built for the bright lights, and uh, you know, do with that what you will. But um, yeah, I don't know this this whole grunge thing. I mean, he's a photographer now. He does a lot of a lot of live music concerts and and shit like that. But uh, I mean, talk about one of the all time imposing forces on the mound here. I think he was probably six ten, six eleven. Yeah. Uh, at his height, he had that long hair, obviously, the scowl on his face staring down these hitters. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a lefty. I mean, you, you, you get up there. I mean, if you're a left-handed batter, I mean, you don't even see that pitch until it's in the catcher's mitt. Um, I mean, I don't even know I don't even know what you're supposed to do with that. Right, right. I mean, I'm so glad. I'm really, for him, I'm, I'm very happy that he got that perfect game in 04. That really, that really, uh, as a pitcher, I'm just so glad he got that. That's just a beautiful the accomplishment. legacy. Yeah, it's just one of those accomplishments that you just, uh, I'm just happy for him, you know. Had a great career, but that was something something special. Something special. Okay, uh, moving ball on. ball dick. My ball dick. Okay, number five. Number five top athletes in the 21st century. This one, a little more obscure. This is, again, had to be there. I know we're kind of pulling out the stops. Some people that may have not necessarily made the splash in the majors. This is but, why we've covered sports for 30 years. This is why we've been beating it for 30 years nonstop. Because we got takes that you're not going to hear anywhere else. We're not going to give you the, oh, you know, I mean, we love Mariano Rivera, but like we put it right Come on, he, he pitched one inning a game. Right, exactly. I mean, come on, he's, he's no Clemens. No Clemens, no. So West Virginia, they had this kid, they had this kid in 2009, 2012. His name was Tavon Austin, okay? He played a little bit for the Cowboys. Unreal. Unreal guy, Rams, 40 touchdowns. Cowboys, he's, he's been around. Yes, absolute speed demon. I like to call them, I like to call these kids speed demons because that's what they are. They just run like a bat out of hell. And oh my gosh, the kid couldn't be caught by anybody. It seemed like. I mean, the only it, reason he get caught, oh, the only reason he stopped running because he was in the end zone. He reached the end zone. You don't have to run anymore. I mean, these, these kind of guys. I mean, you you put you put the ball in the hands in any situation on the field. I mean, hell, he could have played defense, but I mean, if he split out wide, he's in the slot, he's he's in the backfield, he's he's returning punts, he's returning kicks. I mean, any of these things. I mean, he's 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 a threat. I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, this this kind of guy back in the Big East, Big Twelve, there there was a little bit of overlap there. I mean, you kick away from him. You make sure you're doubling him. You got you got somebody over the top to cover him. It didn't matter. It did not matter. I mean, that's the thing. In college, you got a short amount of time there with the four years. And, you know, when you break out, people don't really respect you. They don't know who you are. But, I mean, by the time he was a senior there, everybody knew. And he still beat him. And he was still the right. best. And, I mean, talking about, we mentioned the YouTubes a little bit earlier. I mean, this guy, uh, I mean, if you had anybody, our boy's a little bit too young for this. Um, but, I mean, you imagine... Uh, you know, watching those highlight videos on the YouTube of this guy. I mean, I, I watched um, one before we went on the air. Um, Unreal. Did you? Brought me yeah. right back. I'll be honest. I'm glad I, I'm glad my kid didn't watch it because then he think he could go out there he and run he a 4-2. He think he could go out there with the football, exactly. Yeah, he think he could run out there and run a 4-2. Oh, yeah, it's and a be, good thing. I mean, my, my play, kid's struggling as Giants. it is with the baseball. If you put the football in his hands, I mean, oof, oh my, yeah. not on. Yeah, luckily you don't need speed as a pitcher. Um, but you know, I, I I do hope that he you know I hope that he makes it your, your son you know he's trying hard. Yes, 
But, you know, it's just difficult. Everybody's road's a little different. So, hey, Tavon Austin, yeah, I'm just glad that he didn't come to, uh, you know, the Giants or anything like that. So we can't be pinned for his failure because there's no reason he shouldn't have been a star. Exactly. Mismanagement, I'll tell you. It's That's what happened when he was yeah. with the Rams. I mean, they had all oh those gosh. coaches all those years, and, and they didn't utilize him the right way. Um, yeah. I mean, that was out of his hands. What can you do? So we're in the top five now. We're moving on. We're, we're climbing up. On. Climbing yeah, up we are. Num- number four? Oh, Some would what? say, so this is top four. Some Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. You beat me to it. Damn it, damn it, Sin, you beat me to it. You Got just the stole bin the just in right time. Out. Yeah, you took out uh, your little Sin bin. Exactly. They got the Mount Rush, the Mount Rushmore, the last twenty five years. So once again, like if you've paid any attention to athletics in the last twenty five years, you know that there's a lot going on in golf the last twenty five years. I mean, there's there's some of the best talents of all time, um, but one of them rises above all the rest of them, and that's none other than John Daly. John mm. Daly, an absolutely gregarious, big presence on the course. Uh, 1991 PGA Championship winner, 1995 PGA Open Championship winner. This man loves Diet Coke. He's a prodigious eater, as I can respect. I can get behind that, obviously. Um, and, I mean, this man, I mean, the sport wouldn't be the same without him. I once heard I heard that he, he had 20 Diet Cokes in a day. My best and, is 14. I don't know how he did it. Yeah, yeah, I know. You love your Diet Cokes, too. He had 40, had 40 beers, he said. Kid Rock confirms he had 40 <laughs> beers in one day. The reason Kid Rock we put confirm that Kid Rock. The reason we perform, uh, the reason that we put him on a top five in the top four is obviously his skill. But because, all right, we like golf. I'm atrocious. You're no mo- no better than I am. We both go out there, and what we do is we drink, right? We drink. Right. We have a few cigars. We smoke. We have a good time, and our game goes down when he drinks. When he smokes, game, game goes, goes up. up. Game goes up. You don't see that. You don't see that. I don't know how he does it. It's 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 like uh, it's he's like different. a cheat code for him. Right, he gets stronger. He's he's a built different. I think the crazy thing the kids I mean, are this, saying this guy's this guy's smoking over forty six a game. Right, forty six a day. This man hates 46. water. Doesn't drink any water. No, uh, it's in the diet coke. He says it's diet coke. I mean, there's there's got to be water in diet coke. Yeah, light beer is like ninety seven percent water. That's, That's what basically he says. Water. That's what he says. And uh, so just the fact that he can go on. And like you said, he's winning. He's winning professional golf tournaments. One one gripe I do have with John Daly, he's a big fan of the peanut M and M's. Now I don't like the peanut. I like you I like, like the, the chocolate. I like, I like the regular M and M's. You, yeah, yeah. You like the chocolate. I know. You, I know. Where, where do you where do you stand on this? You got to pick a side. Uh, you know, I one time. I just I, don't okay. think the peanut is that good. Who put the peanut in my chocolate? Peanut butter in my exactly. chocolate. I, you I want know. chocolate. I don't want peanut. I don't know though. I don't know. He might be onto something, but I understand. I know you like your chocolate, so we're just gonna leave it there. Thank you. But like, thank you. Jake. I, you see that video that him and Tiger played around, and uh, Tiger hit a bomb off the tee because Tiger, you know, Tiger's special, obviously. He's but no Daly John Daly. Walked, Daly walked up and he finished his cigar, set it down, and out drove Tiger. Well, that's a, they don't call him Long John for nothing. You said it right. You said it right, Sin. I can't believe we're actually agreeing about something here. People people talk about Tiger as one as the long drive guy, but you got Long John Daly over here out driving it's, Tiger. It's not even a question. Case so, closed. Yeah. And that's exactly. why he's up there number four on our list. That's why he's up there. And he's not he's not moving either. I don't know. There's, I mean Tavon he's, he's love him to death. That Mount Rushmore. Love him to death, but there's no way I'm putting Tavon ahead of him for sure. I mean, if anything, I mean I mean Steen could be making a move up the mountain here. Yeah, I mean he's oh my gosh, pretty early yeah. on in the career. Um, he's early, so far. Yeah. I mean, no, nobody else is really that active anymore in the in the world. So Yeah, you you got a good point. Him, I uh, him Tavon being, actually is still active. I've got two and obviously he's Daly. A free agent. He's, Nobody's gonna sign him. He's washed. Daly's still playing. All good things must come to an end. Except this show. Down to three. Down to three. Speaking of active athletes, we've got one who's managed to come up to three, and I'll let you take the reins on this one, Dick. Oh, my gosh. So this guy, every New Year's Day, you get a show. You know it's coming. Fourth of July. Got, How many oh beers gosh. have you had? <laughs> well, uh, one, one, and one, not too many. Not too many. <laughs> I don't know how you say not it. Not enough. Not enough. Listen, Fourth of July, it's my favorite America's holiday. Joey Chestnut. Is a 16-time Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest champ. He broke the world record. He ate 76 hot dogs and buns. 
And was it 10 minutes or did they change it to 15? 10 minutes. I don't know. Yeah. I don't care. It just, it, it's unbelievable. Maybe I remember, 20. Remember when we went back, when we went back, it was, uh, what was it? 2005, I think it was, when he was a rookie, went to Coney Island, it's one of our things. And, uh, you know, we, we, we saw this guy. He was going he was going against the... Uh, Kobayashi uh, was the guy to beat. Go, Kobayashi. He was going against Kobayashi. Kobayashi. And, you know, he, yeah, and yeah, he was yeah, the best at Kobayashi. the time. Kobayashi. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody was like, this This is the guy. Right. Here comes Joey Chestnut. Here comes Joey Chestnut walking up there. And I remember looking at him. There was something. His teeth were all cracked. His teeth were pointing. They were like fangs. Right. Like, who is this fangs. guy? Where did he come yeah, from? Yeah, I remember, I remember Gord, you were, like, you were like, look at this guy. His name is Chestnut. And you're like, you look... He's, you, said, you said to me, I remember this. You said... He looks like he he chomps on water chestnuts. Tell you what, that chestnut don't crack though, right? Well, unless he's chomping it with his teeth though. And that's it. And you're like, that guy's got a mouth that can bite down on rocks. And you know what he did? He broke that day. He beat Kobayashi, who no one thought could be beaten. You've never heard from him again. Never. He he literally retired him. That's it. He retired Kobayashi, who was one of the greatest. And all Not of a sudden, anymore. he went to a sixteen championships in a row, broke the world record. I can't believe it. This guy's unbeatable. I mean, talk about free money. And I remember that one time two years ago, there was a protester. He actually made eating. He was eating the hot dog. He put him in a headlock. He put him in a headlock. What can he do? And then finish his hot president. dogs. Another eight, I'd vote for him. Well, I'll tell you. Just, this Anything just, to get these old guys out of office. Exactly. I want chestnut. Oh, my God. Oh. Don't get. Okay, poots. But remember, Gord, we're not political we're, on we're this show. We're not political on we, this not show. Poli- we have our takes, but not here. That's for the guys that come on for the hour after us, obviously. We leave well, that to them. That's for the bar. Exactly. When we go to the bar, we'll talk about we that. The bar. And spe- speaking of the bar, um, this is another reason why I love this chestnut guy. I mean, last summer, 4th of July, right? I'm out on, I'm out, I'm out on Long Island Sound. You know, the noisy out with the, out with the boys. We're having some beer at the bar. And mm-hmm. um, there was a weather event in Coney Island. The, 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 they canceled... They canceled the, the hot dog eating contest. Joey Chestnut goes in the back and said, who's with me? We got to do this thing. The fans <laughs> yes. want to show. He's a galvanizing force. He brings everybody back out and, and he tells the broadcasters, he's like, we're doing this today. I mean, who, who else has the power to do that? And he goes out there and he wins. I remember I had a lot of money. I had a lot of money on my man, Joe. He's won it and, 16 uh, times. Yeah. How many and people I, go their whole lives without winning anything one time? 16. All right. I've talked to my son. He's up to like 28 years now. So hopefully. Got nothing. God, nothing know. coming to him. Not I mean, done, mine Joey. with the baseball again. Yes, I know. Not one single thing. <sighs> but I tell you, uh, Joey Chestnut, great guy. I remember we, you know, after it was the third time, we actually got to share a beer with him afterwards because he does like to drink. And uh, that's what I like about him too. He drinks a lot and uh, he gets the work done. So that's what you anyway. do. You, you work hard so you can play hard. Yeah, we could go on about him, but now we're getting to the top two. Now, this top was a difficult. Two. This was a difficult decision for us when we were making the list. Yeah. These two guys. Um, well, and, much, and that's the thing. I mean, when we, we cover we cover all the sports here, right? Oh, every any sports. any discipline, uh, any nation, any continent. It doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're going to be, talk, be talking about right. it here. Um, but if you follow sports like we follow sports, you know that there's two names left on the big board that we're yes. going with, and checking in at number two. This could be a surprise. Some of you may think number one, but number two is the perfect spot for this guy. And that would be none other than Barry Bonds. Baseball's Barry Bonds. home run king, single season and career. 73 dingers in 2001, 762 across his career from 1986 to 2007 uh, between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the San Francisco Giants. Uh, I mean, this guy, his statistics, I mean, you could spend, we could spend the next month of episodes of, you know, talking about talking about this guy and talking about his statistics. But a couple that I like to talk about uh, to speak to Barry Bonds' greatness um, from 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004, so we've got all those seasons, his on-base percentage was greater than 500. So over five in 10 times, he would get on base, including in 2004, he got on at a 609 clip. So six out of every 10 times he came up to the plate, he was getting on base. He's the king of the intentional walk, in addition to being king of the Homa. 120 intentional walks in 2004, 688 times in his career, more than anybody else, probably more than the next five guys combined. I mean, this guy instilled fear when he was in the box the same way Randy Johnson did when he was on the mound. Mm. Um, Just absolutely unbelievable. And the best thing that ever happened to him, signs with San Francisco, I think for the 93 season after Pittsburgh, who didn't want to pay him. 
Uh, he plays there at Candlestick Park for a couple of years, and then they move in. They move in right on right on the bay, uh, San Francisco Bay, and he starts hitting these dingers right into dingers. the Covey Cove. I remember and, that. And I'll tell you the um, the play by play announcer there, Mike Kruko, just absolutely loses. He lost his shit every fucking time. Barry God Bonds bless hit his one. soul. Yeah, <laughs> He's still absolutely. ticking. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like, I'm saying, what a pleasure You'll it was to call Barry Bonds like the Bonds that. era, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember he would get. He was one of the few guys that would get intentionally walked with bases loaded, right? It's crazy. Absolutely, it doesn't make crazy. any sense. It hadn't been done before. It's like I'd rather win the game and you know, and give him a base and a run than lose the game off of a, a absolute grand slam salami. Yeah, like I'd rather lose by one than lose by four and give Barry Bonds another dinger. Yeah, I don't want. Yeah, he just sounded real. He was just so so much of a threat. I know there's a lot of allegations about what he may Who have done. Who gives a shit what they were doing? Exactly. Doesn't this man's matter. close. This guy's closer to a thousand home runs than he is five hundred. Okay, that's a big deal. That's a lot. That's but a, I'll tell that's you a this, lot. That record, Never nobody's gonna broken. break. No one's gonna break Nobody. it. No I would one love will if, break that record. I would love Schwarber. I would love to see Schwarber he'll get up there. He'll have to 500 70, 70 every year for the next ten years. years to yeah. Get there. I just I'd like to see him get five hundred, you know. Yeah. For for the boy, for the bear. Absolutely. Yeah. Wait. Wait. I mean, you think Aaron Judge can get up there? I mean, big frame. I mean, he's gonna get injured. Yeah, probably. I mean, he's dealt. He's 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 got the injury bug the last couple of years. I mean, let no, alone. You don't I mean, tell he me 60, that. He hit sixty two yeah, in twenty twenty two. But right. uh, I mean, before that, after that, I mean, it's been some tough sledding for them. I mean, now Cole's out. I mean, we're looking at more of the same. They got to fire Aaron Boone though. That guy. He, all he does is he gets thrown out of games. He can't manage them. He's not inspiring anymore. We gotta, we gotta do something mm-hmm. about that. I mean, I'll tell you, if Steinbrenner, the big man, was still here, oh my gosh, Aaron Boone wouldn't be. Right. Well, thank God. I mean, the Red Sox are in shambles. Over oh there, man, right? they, they 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 tell everybody their owners out there. They tell everybody at the beginning of the off season, hey, we're going full throttle. We're gonna full sign throttle. everybody. Right. We're gonna throw money at the problem. Right. That's why I told right. my ex wife it didn't work out either with that. Yeah. Throw money at the problem. <laughs> Heard Nothing that before. Worked. Same thing, my, my boy with the baseball. Same right. thing. I know. Yep. Throw money at the problem. You got to fix everything. No, that's work. not how this works. Hard work, nose to the grindstone. That's what fixes problems. Exactly. I- your wife well, I'll tell never you, the got socks, it. They got nothing, which right. I'm not complaining about. Obviously, no, you know? no, obviously, yeah, yeah it just makes it easier. But now you got the Orioles, they're back, and I mean I the Blue Jays the got something going on up there. And you always got to watch out for the Rays. I mean, they, they I mean, they, 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 they pay their roster with pocket change and a couple of five dollar bills they find behind the couch, and they still Somehow. they win ninety games a year. I know. And then, oh man, the Braves, the Braves and the Phils are always difficult dog fight. Okay, <sighs> what do you think about Shohei? This whole gambling thing. Gambling it's like thing. Pete Rose all over again. Remember Pete, Pete Rose? Rose? Who, he should be in the Hall of Fame, by the way. I, he should, absolutely I don't should care. be. Absolutely should be. I don't care that he bet on his team. He bet on them to win every time. Right. Everybody should do that. If you're really, if you're really with your I, team. Everyone should do that. Hot take. Put it out on the papers. Press it. Send it out tomorrow morning. Everyone should be betting on themselves. Betting on their own team. It shows That's that you what, care. It shows that you care. It shows that you believe. But That's the problem the I mean, is, Otani, this translator. Right. This translator, I, I'm actually, a little, I'm actually having second thoughts if, if Shohei could speak English or not. I kind of think he can. I think he's been, I think he's been holding back on us. I think it's a whole thing. I'll but tell you, not, I don't want to get it too much into it, it. It doesn't matter to me if he's gambling, if the translator's gambling, as long as if if they were betting on baseball, I, I don't care. As long as they're betting on the Angels back then and now the Dodgers, if they're betting on them to win, they'd be fine. Who would? But who, they're not. The why, crazy wouldn't, part, why wouldn't you bet on your own team to win? The crazy part You're is this, this, some things came out and they actually bet for them. They bet the over and they bet on the other team to uh, over on runs and stuff. And Shohei had some of his worst pitching days. So he's doing the opposite. This fire. Yeah, but the smoke is exactly. And now there's a whole we'll big to, we'll thing. Have, we'll, we'll have to think about this one. We might have to take a... Uh, uh, investigative reporting trip out west, and uh, oh yeah, you know, we just go like, see just our like boys. we did when we first got our start back in the nineties. Well, maybe we go up to. and see our. Uh, we go see our boy Minji. He's got that show, yeah. obviously in San Fran area, and they friend they've of had our a great, show. We're friends of his show. I've been on. I've been on a few times. Great time. It was a uh, ninety-seven nine, uh, the W, uh, Whammy show out in the San Fran. Absolutely killer. And uh, what I was going to say content. is. Yeah, great content. Anyway, we should get up there because you know they got a good they got a good sports scene, obviously in California. Not like somebody's got to answer these questions. Not like New York, though. Not like New York. Not lately. 
Not lately. Well, yeah. We got nothing coming okay. to us. So we could talk about, I could talk about Bonds. I mean, okay, if there's one person on this list that I've watched more tape on than anybody, it's going to be Bonds. Yeah, I would say for me, it's either Bonds. Shankel? Shankle, maybe. But Shankle like, was an honorable mention. Uh, I've watched a lot YouTube of Shankle guy. in my day. He was one of those YouTube guys. He's one of those YouTube guys. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I started watching a lot of that stuff, and, you know, th thankfully I was able to put put it away. But um, I, under I understand why crazy. the kids love. I understand why the kids love the YouTubes. Me too. Me too. So, I mean, that anyway. Tavon Austin stuff from earlier. Oh, yeah. Ooh, wow. Killer. Killer, killer. Okay. Moving on. Uh, we're coming up to the, we're closing up on the, the last Crown 10 Jewel. minutes. The last ten minutes of the ep, uh, you know, the hour is dwindling fast. It's been a, it's been a great time. Obviously, you know how good Sin Bin Simmons and Dick Playoff Richards roll. We roll hard, we roll fast, and we roll it down the middle. And that takes us to number one, the greatest sportsman of the last twenty five years. I'm going to pass this over to Sin Bin because you are a resident bowler that we have here. So please take us into. The Weber Zone. I'll tell you, I learned everything I did about the sport from this man here. Checking yeah. in at the number one spot on our list is Pete. Who do you think you are? I am Weber, the mm. PBA legend, Hall of Famer. And one thing I got to like about him before we even get into his skill set, this is not a man of incredible stature. He's standing in at five foot seven. So that's for all the short kings out there. Uh, we gotta we gotta stick together. We gotta we got we gotta we gotta take care of our own, you know. And Pete right. Weber, I mean, what what can you say about this man? Thirty seven titles on the PBA tour, um, absolutely unbelievable. I know Dick, you and I were there, lucky enough to watch in person. Uh, was the perhaps, best decision, best best call you ever had was to go out there and, and perhaps watch it. the crowning achievement came in two thousand twelve. Unprecedented fifth U.S. Open title. It was a back and forth affair, and he comes up with the game on the line with a chance to win it. The ball is in, in his hands. He is caressing the ball, and he rolls a strike. Like the he Jesus. turns exactly. He turns to the crowd and he utters the immortal words, "Who do you think you are? I am." And I mean, you're talking about words to live by. A lot of people go to scripture. A lot of people go to poetry. I mean, I go, I go to, I go to Weber. You think about Valvano's speech. You think about. Russell Westbrook talk about or Kevin Durant even, talk even about the his fucking, mom. Even Miracle. I mean, people go to that. I mean, I go to Weber. You think about Disney World, yeah. You think about all this stuff, but you go to Weber. I go to Weber. First thing I think about. I mean, this, the the Weber chills. story. It's it's got everything. I mean, it's got peak performance. It's got um, you know he wasn't given the gift. I mean, five seven. I mean, that's not a that's not an athletic height. You know, to fill out that frame, he's got the struggles. I mean, in 1985 Sports Illustrated article, Weber admitted to spending a four-week stretch on a tour while he's bowling in a, quote, complete blackout. Staying up. This is crazy. I know exact. Gordon, please continue. This is this is really golden. This is golden. Uh, he stayed up for days reporting. on end, just going, they, going on a bender with Coke, Jack Daniels every night. Said between eighty two and eighty four, he blew one hundred and fifty grand. I mean, that's the eighties. One hundred fifty grand is a lot. It's a lot today. I mean, it's a lot then. But, but good. Me and you, me and you know this. The eighties with the cocaine era was different. Okay, it was Oof. different. Model with the different land bias. You know, we lost some people. But I'm just saying, I understand where Pete was coming from during this time. It's a stressful time to be on tour during the eighties. One hundred fifty grand though, that's a lot. It's not spare change. Nah, he got the Play Trinity. Much. He got the he was because he was rolling on the Trinity, cocaine, alcohol, and gambling. That's nothing. That's no. That's nothing that that's you can it. handle I mean, this by is, yourself. This is this is like a daily thing to me. I mean, but that seems like at the time, you know, it, it elevates it. But you know, you can only do that stuff for so long. And and you know, by the grace of God, you know, he was able to able to you know get on the straight and narrow again, as we all hope to do. I mean, well, talk you know about what? the redemption. I mean, 2012. I mean, we were there. Yeah, exactly. I talk about 2012. Okay. And this is where well, I was thinking. I, I know, you know, I go to my, my wife takes me to church and I go to church and, and I always say, you know, when she talks about testimony and telling your story, and I say I'm building my testimony. And that's what Weber was doing the whole time. He was doing all those drugs and and, and 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 playing and all that stuff. He was building his testimony. So when he said those words on in twenty twelve, when he says, Who do you think you are? I am, that was his testimony. You know what I'm saying? That was twenty five years in the making. That's exactly what sports are all about. It's about that, exactly. the ability to inspire and the ability to move people in such a way that they can change their own lives. You know, I mean, that's that's really that's really what we come here for. That's that's why we've been covering this for the last thirty years. Yeah, that's why our kids won't quit. You know, 
Because exactly. they've, they've been listening to the pops all, all day long, talking about the great, talking about the Pete Webbers and the Barry Bonds of the world, Joey Chestnuts. Even the Jeremy oh, Lins of the world. Lins Sanity. So, yeah, I mean, sports sports just have a special pl- I mean, you know this. I'm rambling now. You guys all know sports have a special place in both of our hearts. We're thankful. But that's our top 10. I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's the best top 10 list anybody's ever put together. It's uh, the best, you know, a lot, a lot of outlets, got. a lot of publications try to get more ambitious with, you know, top hundred lists or something like that. I mean, it's all fluff. I mean, you got to, you got to get down to the cold hard facts here, and I think that's what we did today with our top ten list. And I'll tell you, there's no better, no better way for me to return to the airwaves than than this list, breaking it down with you. I know over the last thirty years we've been through a lot together. Uh, we've had our fair share of disagreements, but uh, at the end of the day, Dick, you are my brother, and there's nobody else I'd rather be doing this with you. Than you. you thank you god that, that that means a lot i mean you know there was a time when i didn't think we were going to continue this and then obviously the suspension came about but you, you know the what? only one who stood by me i told the i told the producers i told that damn producer uh well sorry i shouldn't say that uh, i told our producer our lovely producer i said listen if simbin's not by it's my side i can't i said if simbin's not by our side i can't do this anymore i just wouldn't i wouldn't do it if it wasn't for you and wasn't for our well, listeners I, I would i wouldn't be here today without you so from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm getting teary eyed. I feel like Vince McMahon. I'm like, don't don't say anymore. So anyway, we got a game to catch. The Knickerbockers are playing tonight. I think they got uh, Philadelphia the Sixers right down the road. Oof. Yeah, well, you know, Embiid's been out with an injury, so I'm not too worried, but uh, we still gotta come and play. So Absolutely. any last words there, Gord? That's about it. It's good to be back in the seat with you and uh, to all of the loyal listeners over here. 96.9 WFMZ, the sack fly. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking by us for the last 30 years. And uh, here's to another 30. God willing. God willing. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day. Cheers. Cheers.